Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University, and this is the introduction to Drawing for Designers class. And today we're doing a, a two-point perspective of the cubic module, um, which we've been working on in the past. Um, and it's going to have the horizon line that's rather low. And I'm going to do a, a summary of all the various perspective drawings that we did so far. Um, but focus on making um, one drawing um, freehand. And uh, for the assignment, actually, you have to use at least one straight edge. Uh, for the, but for the purposes of the video, I'll use this uh, little, and I'll just try to like wing it all kind of freehand, which could be a good exercise, um, but it's not exactly the assignment, OK? Um, so uh, let me just first uh go yeah just a little summary of what we did so far we actually did a drawing before this which was a, a one perspective drawing of the garden um where we showed uh, a scene that was uh looking like this and there was a floor there was a tree and and this is again one point perspective so just one vanishing point uh the lines vanish there but the other lines the horizontals and the verticals um, stay uh, parallel. Okay. Um, and we took your cube. Okay. And we did a construction that was, um, again, making it look like it was a large environment. Um, so if this was your cube, you were supposed to just place it in front of you with a particular spot. The, the little dot you see is the uh, is the uh, uh, vanishing point. So in this drawing, we talked about how you could actually take your cube, right? Open it up and actually look inside to really see what the camera is saying, right? Which, you know, it's a good approximation of what a perspective drawing is. So, you know, it wouldn't be like that, it wouldn't be like that. So what I'm trying to match is the center, as you can see, the center of my frame, of the overall frame um with that vanishing point so this will give you an idea of what the drawing might look like and once we constructed the main sort of envelope the main wireframe we use diagonals because uh, everything stays in perspective we found the center by by connecting opposite corners of that cube let's say from the back corners here to the front corners up here um, and we created a grid and we did that by simply for each face um drawing diagonals which would then be um, defining the center and then more diagonals would define more centers of the smaller squares and so we create this grid onto which then we projected onto which we drew our um our pattern okay so the idea is that we keep the storyboard there at all times so that we know how to refer to it so, we talked about when you get to a point where after you've drawn your thread and after you've connected all the lines to not worry about what it looks like, but then using more tracing paper to try to figure it out. Um, this would be the step without thinking. Then this would be the step. Okay, now I'm gonna try to figure out what's visible and what's not. Okay. Now this of course is is opposite the view my my big area is on the on the right here um and it's here it's on the left but it's the same cube and then once i figure this out then i can make the the exact with the straight lines okay so if you were doing the tools version you would go through this process um, in an earlier video <laughs> I also talked about how um, yeah, this is also kind of flipped, but how you can use tracing paper. Yeah, this is a different design. How you can use tracing paper to um, draw your storyboard. Let's see. Because this is all completely unfolded. Uh, and when we're drawing, we're looking at it inside rather than just outside like this is showing. You can use tracing paper once you've built it in perspective to replicate 
the parts in perspective, but as if it was fold out. It's a little bit of an odd thing, uh, but that would then allow you to fold it back in. And you can see, you'll be able then to see what your design looks like, okay? Um, which would make it easier to draw it later, okay? So that was one point perspective, which is gonna be similar to the drawing we're gonna do now, which is the last drawing of the semester. Um, but before we did that, we did two point perspective, but from above, okay? So this is just now real quick. Uh, we established, we put the object against the picture plane. We put the distance points by, by projecting parallel lines from the station point right here, which is at a certain distance. Um, then we projected from the object down to the station point where it crossed. We, um, we dropped it down and that gives us the edge. So this is fundamentally different, similar rather than the one we're gonna do today, except it's much higher. The horizon line is above the object. Um, so we see quite a bit of it, right? Like this. Whereas today we're gonna to go in and the horizon line is much much lower. Uh, the the steps though are the same. Once you do the clean, once you do the construction, make sure you do a clean one. That might be uh, might be like this if you use again tools. If you use freehand, it's going to be uh, slightly different. So let me just. So this was done with tools. And then today we're gonna do with, with freehand, you're gonna see that there is a template on iLearn um, for today's assignment, which will look like this, but will be again with a lower arousal line, okay? Um, so once again, you will do a lot of construction, even if it is freehand. You have to find the grid, right? You have to find all those spots. And I used a lot of tracing paper here to help me out uh, because it's not so straightforward, right? Uh, but once I'm all kind of finished, I use more tracing paper on top of that. And then eventually I do a clean one. And this will be in your nice paper, right? Tracing paper is fine to do the final. Um, okay, so now we come to today's. I'll give you a little bit of history, which is that in class, of course, well, not of course, but what I did, I gave everybody a template that was large, 11 by 17. So here, if you wanna do the version with tools, um, you, need to, you need to print out these two pages. Okay, I'm just gonna go up. It's gonna be slightly out of focus now for a moment, but so print out these two pages and the setup is already there for you. The station point will be set up. Just, you know, join them here. You see there is a little, a little, uh, little markings. Um, and the old video, by the way, um, the old and the new for the tools version will have this set up, okay? Anyway, again, you can just do one and I would recommend doing the right one just to keep it consistent, you can do both. You would do the, all the construction and then with tracing paper, you would show the final, okay? There is also a PDF, um, again, from the old, older video that shows all the steps. And what's nice about this PDF actually is that it has annotations. Uh, if you don't see, see them well in, in the browser, just download the PDF so that you'll be able to see these annotations, okay? And this one also has the part. Oh, I wish it did. No, it doesn't. It does not have the color. Too bad. Um, this continues, and there is yet another assignment that is um, a color version of this. Um, but that's not required now. It's optional. Okay. But maybe maybe I do have a picture of it. Oh yeah. This was a a, a version doing. Um, First black and white, 
There is a whole tutorial on how to do a color version of this drawing. Um, and again, if you wanted to do it, you could just do the right one. Uh, first in black and white and then in color, just with some color pencils. Okay, now finally we go to the one that we're going to do now, which is uh, this one, which I did tape last, last uh, spring, I think. Again, the resolution is a little bit off, so um, hopefully this will, be, this will be better. And if you did decide, there is two options okay so you can print this out literally just print it out on eight and a half by eleven um, and then just work on it this will be the one on the left you can see you can see the right side of the cube and you can see it's more extreme because I'm confined by the size of the paper um, this is the one on the right and again it's slightly different from the one done with tools because the varnish you know I'm limited by the paper so what I'm gonna do I'm going to repeat this one freehand. Um, and I could also reconstruct it right on a clean white piece of paper. But what I'll do now for the purposes of the video, I'll take this and I'll pretend it's the real thing and I'll draw on it. Except I'll draw on another one because I don't want to mess this up. Um, okay. So my recommendation would be do this one do the same view that you did um, that you did for the one point uh, perspective. Okay, so that would be, uh, let's see if I can find it. Which is this, this is actually high, this is wrong. Um, yeah, so if this was my view and I'm now trying to Right for the for the high high horizon line, just do the same view. It's it's easier, right? To just keep everything sort of in your keep track of everything. I'm looking for my little yeah. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for this one, and I'm gonna use the same storyboard, the same setup. Okay, so I'm gonna write today's date that way. I know. Is the ninth? I'm gonna say uh, low horizon line. Right. So this is this is important once again to have your little storyboard. So decided. I'm gonna do this one, and this is how it looks after I'm done. And you can see I did it with tools, but. Just a reminder, I did it just using one straight edge, okay? Um, and so for my, for my um, I believe I did, for my verticals, I just tried to, you know, orient my tools in such a way that it is straight, you know, just to be, you know, more or less, it doesn't have to be like perfect, perfect, but, um, and then I used tracing paper. Okay, and before I even did that, I don't have it here, but I'm sure I had, yeah, there you go. I had a, a sketch version that I sketched out in tracing paper by trial and error. And when I resolved it, I did my final on another piece. Okay, which in your case, again, it would be on a nicer sheet. Yeah, this is a lightly different design. There's several designs floating around, <laughs> which you can't use because they're, they're mine because of the videos. So let's see, I'll stick this because the last, last week's videos were good. I'll stick to this one, which was from last week, um, which is actually slightly different from that. Okay, all right. So we'll set that up and um, I'll just pretend that um, that I'm writing directly on this, but I'll put another piece because I don't want to mess this up, okay? Um, oh yeah, and this was the cube that I had last week, which which is the one that I did, the one I'd made out of plexiglass. So we'll refer to this one. Okay. This paper is actually eight and a half by 11 because it's the one you can print from Eiler. So it will fit on that smaller size. Um, If you're retracing it, you could you could retrace it, I guess, on on 
on um, eight by twelve. Okay, which is what I'm taping down now. Okay, uh, and that that might be a good exercise because then you do it truly, truly from scratch, like I you know like I did. Then you can just just kind of eyeball it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use. Let's see. Um, I'm going to use a pencil, uh, kind of a fairly dark. Yeah, so that we can really see it, okay, in the video. Um, but you, you might want to use a, dark, uh, a lighter pencil to do it, okay? So in theory, you should be able to do everything with um, the straight edge. Yeah, should be enough your 12 inch straight edge should be enough. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly recreate this, okay? Really quick. And once again, I'll be using a lot of tracing paper probably as I get closer to. So I'm gonna do it dark again, because it's for the video, but you use light, okay? Um, so just once I establish the vanishing point, that's the vanishing point on the right by the way, which happens to look, well, it is inside the cube. And, um, and it gives the false impression that it is a uh, one point perspective. Also because these lines are not that at an angle, but, um, but it's two point, okay. What I might do is if it gets too crowded, I'll just use tracing paper. I'll kind of pick it up from there. Um, so here, yeah, here basically I just eyeball it to try to make it look like a cube. So I started with the first edge, and once again, just just try to eyeball the edge of the you know of the of the paper. Of course, if you print this and you work right on it, you don't have an issue because it'll already be printed for you. But um, so we don't have the left vanishing point yet. We're gonna do in a sec, like that right here. So this will be my left vanishing point. Um, and this, I'm gonna write it small. Uh, this is the right vanishing point, okay? And this is my horizon line, okay? So of course now, as soon as I find this spot like that, I can just, I can just connect it, right? And then I found the next one. And now, see, now the trick is that I built these parts in a system, right? So now I have the vanishing point, this point, and this point, we should all be like in a nice straight line. Let's see. Let's see how good I am or how good this was. Well, I was tracing it, so it should be pretty, pretty close. Yeah, I'm a little off, but I'm gonna split the difference there. Um, and then for the depth, I just, again, eyeballed it. Um, if, if we use that principle that we did before, which is where we halved this distance from the, let's call this the ground line, um, then, you know, it's about here, right? So then if I connect that point to the left, it's a little, it's not quite enough. It's a little, it's less than I'd like. So I'm gonna push it a little bit high, higher to get a little more. Okay, so once I find those spots, I just, uh oh, now, now I'm really, <laughs> yeah, now I'm a little off because, so let's, let's go back and do it. It, it, it sh you should have corners that are pretty set because otherwise things are not gonna, even if it is freehand, things are gonna be a little bit too, too free, <laughs> too much freedom, okay? So what I'm doing now is I'm just compensating a little bit and I'm making my grid, um, I mean, my, my drawing a little more precise, okay? So it's amazing again, what you can do with just, you know, just a straight edge, right? Because even though it looks a little bit distorted, um, it is obeying, as I mentioned maybe before, it's its own distorted laws. I mean, they're they're you know they're consistently um, 
applied throughout, right? It's not like it's going to be distorted one way in one, one side and a different way or a different side. It's, it's all, all there. Okay, great. That's it. So um, here's what I'll do. Now we have to draw the grid, right? And let me bring up my, my cellophane, I mean, not cellophane, um, acetate cube. Um, and also my little storyboard, put it there. It's in focus. Um, so the idea now is that again we have to we have to construct each one of these faces and and actually really to be to be more precise, we're really constructing the bottom, right? I hope I mean by now you obviously realize that's what we're dealing with, right? Because that's that's the base sitting on the ground and that's the part that we're looking. And in my earlier drawing, I used this edge. So what I'll do is I'll try to locate that edge, which is the mountain, right? It's right, this one. And, um, and now which edge would that be? That would be, if I, would, I would say this edge because now we moved, we moved to the left, right? So now we're in our view. Now we're not anymore looking at straight edge, but we're looking uh, we're looking at a spot that, that allows you to see some of these some of these sides. So it's probably I don't know, probably here. Okay. So um, low horizon line. That would be the new the new spot. Um, okay. So that means that this becomes my right side, this is my front, this is my left, and this is the back side. Okay. And so now for the purpose of the video, what I'll do, I'll take a, a leap of faith. And what I'll do is I'll just build one, one side, okay, using tools, because you should do that, um, because it's more precise. Using not tools, tools in the sense of just just one straight edge, but then I'll do the rest freehand to make speed up the video a little bit and see, see how it goes. But at home, do each face using at least a straight edge, okay? All right, so um, for now we'll put this back. So yeah, I don't have a cardboard, but we'll be able to see through this guy because we can, we can see through the front. What I'll do is I'll open the, um, I'll open one of these paper sides, um, which would be let's let's just figure out again which which side we're looking at. Which we, we shifted a little bit to the left, and originally was this one, which was the mountain, like this corner right there, right there. Now we moved a little bit, and so we're going to the more to that side and we're gonna look inside. So I just have to make sure I mark it. So this would be my front. And then now I'm going to open it so that I can actually see just through this face and keep the others, keep the others um, visible, right? There we go. Okay, yeah, actually later, if I, if I lighten this, we should be able to see inside and it'll still be, be pretty clear. Um, okay, let me put that aside for a moment. And um, everything's good. Um, okay, so again, I'll just do that side. We're using tools. So we have again determined that this view now is from this original, from the high perspective, high horizon line, we're gonna to shift to low and we're gonna move a little bit so that we can see both sides of the cube, left and right on the inside. And now I don't have my, my vanishing point drawn there, but, um, but this is how we're gonna look at from this point right here, okay? 
which means that the right side as I move around will be this. Now notice that as I move around the real cube, my right side, um, right, looks exactly like my fold out here, right? Right there. But of course in my cube, I have to look at it from the inside. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry too much now, but I'm just gonna draw the grid and then I'm gonna follow my, um, what I call again, my battleship system, okay? Battleship game, which will mean, okay, I go down one and I go across two. Um, but my main concern right now is to draw the grid in order for me to be able to draw that shape. Okay, so let's just do it. Um, uh, Using the the using the straight edge, I'm going to use a different colors, and I think orange is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so this might be a strategy to use a different color for each side, <laughs> if you have four different color pencils. So again, I want to find a grid, right? I have this shape, right? but I know that shape is actually a square, right? So if I know that, I know that if, if I have a square and I draw diagonals, I can find the centers and I can do a two by two grid. So I do the same thing here, which now is exaggerated. Um, now, yeah, okay. And these are no, because it's going to the vanishing point, okay? Um, then I do the same thing. If I do more diagonals here, I get the other division right here. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do here. Do one more diagonal, one more diagonal and get my other divisions, okay? So let's do that. I'm gonna use red for the first one and now I'm just gonna move fast, okay? So diagonals, okay? I get the center. So now trying to stay straight here. Uh, now that needs to go to the vanishing point. All my horizontals, which are these lines, uh, this should be at the midpoint. Let's see if it's right. 75, yeah, roughly, that's good. Uh, so that's good. So now I do more diagonals here and I can do another one here. Okay. And the cool thing, even though now you don't see it, but actually, let me just show you, is that if I were to extend these diagonals, if I did it right, roughly, they will converge on a vanishing point here, okay? Because diag these diagonals are all parallel as well, right? So each set of parallel lines has its own vanishing point. In this case, it would be down here somewhere. We, we're not interested in it right now, but, um, but it's interesting to notice, okay? All right, so now that I have, um, I'll use a different color to highlight these spots, a little redder. Okay, so now I can do my verticals and the verticals are parallel. So we don't, we don't mess with those in terms of going, we just keep them. Okay, now I go to the vanishing point. Now I go to the vanishing point. Okay. So as soon as I do that, I'm gonna just draw my little dots here for my grid because, um, yeah, because it will allow me to see this, this whole plane as one thing, okay? Um, well, I tell you what, what, I was gonna draw the shape there now, in other words, the cube, but why don't we instead finish, finish the grid? And, I can show you how to do one like literally, literally free, free, free hand, but you know, it's, it just depends how comfortable you are, but um, just use a straight edge, but I'm just gonna do it now for the purposes of the video, okay? And see how good, how good it comes out. But I did the same for the back, right? I want out the grid in the back. So I, I do two diagonals, 
which give me that spot. I do a vertical. Now I now these points should connect. Okay. Now I do more diagonals. And because this is actually not as distorted, it will look a little more, uh, you know, more even and balanced. Um, so I got those points. Oh, where am I? Somewhere there. Okay, yeah, purple is not a great color for the video. <laughs> okay. So make my little dots. And this will really help. Um, you know, having different colors like that, okay? Yeah, you see the progression is a little bit, a little bit unbalanced, should be a little more over there, right? Because I wanna go bigger and bigger as I move to the right. Um, so use the tool, okay? I'm doing it for the video, I'm doing it freehand, uh, really, really freehand. I'm gonna use a different color now, one that will show. A lot here. Let's see, green. Yeah, green is pretty good. Um, mind you, now that I have these spots, you know, it would be actually a cinch. <laughs> That's what you might say, right? Because why don't we try that? Because if I now project from here, see that? I get immediately. Um, well, sort of. Horizontals, okay, I have to adjust a little bit there. Um, and by the same principle, remember, if I have these lines and I draw a diagonal, then I can get all my verticals, okay? So what I do is now I do a diagonal and I get these spots, I get my grid. Okay, so now I make my dots. Um, and so now I've done right, back, left, and now I have to do the front, right? Because of course the front has a design too, right? It's this line right here. Um, and that's, you could say it's easier because it's bigger, right? Um, so uh, I could try, okay, let me just, I tell you what, I'll go back quickly to just using the straight edge because, um, I'm gonna do the big one um, with a different color. And this time I am gonna use the, the straight edge. So I wanna find the center. I'm gonna draw it lightly. And the center happens to be here. So I do a vertical. And then here I find the horizontal. I mean, you can say it's like, yeah, it's like, well, way this story, right? These two squares are so big compared to this, but it's just the fact that everything's compressed into this one page. Uh, oh, sorry, you see that? I shouldn't have, I should have made that match because that's, that's what it should be. So my, my drawing stays, stays coherent, okay? So quick diagonal there quick diagonal here. And I don't know if you, if you can see it, but again, if I were to like extend this to, uh, you know, outside of the paper, you see that all these diagonals would like converge. In fact, they even, they even almost fit on the paper. Um, so same principle of the lines converging. So now that they found this, and now, of course, it starts to get, comp you know, it's got, it starts to get busy, but that's where tracing paper will help again. So, and again, this should match, right? Everything should match. Well, that's nothing. <laughs> Oh, I haven't done this yet. 
Okay, here we go. Yeah, these lines are, are not perfectly parallel, but they should be. So I'm going to make a quick correction here to just keep them nice and nice and separate. Okay, so now I have, you know, I have my grid. Um, And let's let's just draw another step. Let's draw the front, right? The front is this shape, right? So it's this first one. So now I will tra use tracing paper because it's really it really really helps. Um, and I can I can just you know cover it up or uh, decide to go back to the paper if I need to. Um, on the one hand, I love to make all these lines and just make like this jungle and then try to figure it out. On the other hand, it takes more work, <laughs> your brain. And this is, you know, this is this is pretty good, right? This is still visible because we see, we see what we just did. I'm gonna actually tape this again. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to use yet another color, maybe a dark green. So I'll start with this first one and I just, and actually I'll just quickly redraw this here so I see it through. Maybe just leave the bottom. That's the front. That's the right, left and back. Um, so yeah, nothing much to that. It is what it is. So this would be here. So I start start here. Oh, I guess I could plot first my spots without um, right and just following them. And then after I plot them, I can connect them. When you're trying to connect a line like this freehand, you can just do a little bit of like dry runs. Um, like in the air and then kind of do it. Okay. Um, here's a trick, and this is actually slightly different from the tracing paper I did the other day. You know, how, how do we draw it? You know, how do we draw that? I said, oh, you know, we can, we can do this we can take, we can unfold it. So I can use tracing paper, I can draw it. So I can draw just the outline. I can just draw the outline of the back, but then I can unfold it. And then I literally just copy the pattern that I see. So in this case, you can see, um, I just copied these other, these other two parts, right? Which are the two parts that I needed to see as if, I, as if I were looking at it from the outside. And I kept saying, because now you can just copy. The funny thing though, is that this shape right now, looking at it from the inside is actually basically the same shape as looking at it from the outside because it's symmetrical, it's the mirror image, remember? Um, so <laughs> the, the thing that does change, of course, uh, is it's actually you know photographic image, but the relationships are the same, um, and that's because it is a mirror image, right? So in other words, um, you know that is uh, here, yeah, that is a mirror image, right, on the right side, which means that if it's a mirror image, if I flip the paper, it's still the same mirror image. Um, anyway, this is one of those things that like, oh man, okay, after all that. Um, it probably works better or you get more out of it if that trick would be done to two parts that were not symmetrical mirror image. You see, those are actually different. And so that would be, you know, a little more useful in that particular case. But I just wanted to mention that because it's, it's really interesting how this project, every time I try to simplify it, it actually opens up like new 
new roads. Um, so another way we can go to the old school way, which was the uh, the battleship way, right? So now that I'm here, right? I can say, okay, I need to go across two and down one. So now in my grid here, I can go across two and down one, which so that would be here. Uh, then I go up two, one and two. So that would be here. Then I go across one and down one, that would be down here. And then across one, which would be here. So let me just draw that. And now I'm starting to do again, the thing where I don't really think that much. I just draw it, okay? I don't, I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna even try because, okay. And now I'm at this point, right? That's my right panel, it's the back, remember? Cause I'm going this way. Now I have to reconnect to this side. So now the back is this square but again flipped, but I just have to pay attention to my motion, right? To my direction of movement, because I'm here, I've, I have to go towards the left, but here I'm going towards the right. So I'm there in the middle, I have to go across one, then down and across one, up two, uh, down one and across two right here. So now I connect that. So now I'm here. Now that's the left side. So across two and up one, across two and up one, down two, across one and up one, right there, and then across one. So that's my thread, what I call my embroidery, okay? So that's now our full pattern. And now actually, why don't I take this off and we can look at the actual cube. Oops. If I were to put that here, right? Of course, this is not as distorted now because you know the drawing is particular. Um, but you can see that you can, you can start to see, like, I don't know if you can see it, but this line is uh, that line in front, of course, you know, and the other lines too, right? Like these lines right here are there. So this gives you a sense, oh, okay, it's starting to look like something. Um, we're still missing the center of the cube. So yet another color, maybe a dark yellow. So we find that by connecting opposite, um, opposite diagonal. So let's say from the back left to the top right. Okay. Um, and then from the back right to the top left. Ah, I wish it was, I'm a little off. I can tell already it's, it's somewhere there. So I'm just gonna make a little crossing. I know I'm a little off because these two lines, these two points are gonna to have to make a straight line and they're gonna to have to meet in the center. So actually what I'll do, I'll fudge a little bit and I move it a little bit and then I'll double check with a few other lines. You can see that they're gonna all meet in the center. And if I find like three to do that, then, then I'm in good shape, right? Then I know it's probably right. So this one is also a little bit off, but I'm close. So it's, it's that triangle there. <laughs> which is actually, a, should be a single spot. Um, okay, so that's my center. Another thing I haven't done yet is the floor. So why don't we do that like super quick and I'll, maybe I'll just use black for the floor. Um, so let's just highlight it. Um, and I thought of the floor because the floor is a one way of helping me finding the center or double checking the center. So if I, if I just, and just draw it. Um, uh, 
Okay, I'll just I'll just do the floor also again freehand. Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna. So it's tight, right? Because it's small. So, but again, you can use the straight edge. Um, I'm just being a little. So maybe that's the center. So let's see if that matches. Okay, find these spots. Let's do two diagonals this way. Find those spots. Now that I found those, I can do, oh, now, yeah, because it's so tight, now I'm gonna use the straight edge to go to my vanishing point, because remember it's there, okay? Because that's, uh, I, wa I want the video to be a little, a little precise, not, not completely. <laughs> So now I'm just hitting the centers, right? The spots I found earlier. And notice that there should match the sides of my cube. And they do pretty well, it looks like. Yeah. Oops. Yep, there is no undo there. Okay, so you can see that my verticals here are matching what I just found on the floor here, okay? And because this looks nice, I'm gonna, I'm gonna darken it. The floor really helps to give you know, a sense of the space, right? So here, I don't need diagonals actually because, oh yeah, here it is. Well, because I have these back spots already, so. Let's just do it. This doesn't look right, it's this one. Sorry, that was a mistake. This is the right spot here. Uh, so this is actually, this is, I have to say, it's kind of fun because you know, you're not always worrying about like being so precise with all the construction. And even though it is precise, um, there is something um, nice about just using one straight edge, right? Um, and I'm darkening now because I know every it's clear, the floor is cleared of anything else. So I can just, uh, okay, so that's good. So I've got the floor, I've got, you know, my embroidery, I've got my center. Now, again, once again, just don't think, just connect everything, connect everything to that center. Even if you're looking at your cube and you won't be able to see the lines because you have no plexiglass, you'll have more like a solid thing um, like this. And so some lines will be, um, will be hidden, temp well, not temporarily, but, right? Will be like that so you'll be able to see the lines but some lines will be obscure which is actually what you want right eventually you want to see the real thing solidly right i mean this is open but the rest is solid um but until we try to figure it out like exactly just just draw everything don't worry about it um i mean because now i do have to try to really hit that center properly every time um I'm going to just use a straight edge, okay? Uh, what I'm not gonna draw, because I know already in my design and many of yours, you might have a line that goes here, which is not really there. It's, it's, it's what I call neither a mountain or a valley because it's all flat, right? So that in my design is this line right here. So I'll skip that one, okay? Otherwise I'll just copy every, I'll just uh, draw everything. So let's see if I can. Maybe use a nice color that's visible there. And now I'm gonna do really dark because, um, because I really wanna see it and then I'll use another piece of tracing paper. So, um, so let's start. We, we know the lines from opposite corners go through the center. So your goal is to achieve that and have the center be as close as possible to just one little dot, one little crossing, as opposed to like a big triangle where the lines don't cross. Um, so let's just do that, okay? That's one, so let's see, this is another one right here. 
In other words, I don't need to look at my cube now. I just, I just kind of know I need to do this step. Uh, that's another one. So that's one. If I hit the center now, where is that? That would be here, right? Second, yeah, this one. Right, that's the midpoint of the left edge. Yeah, okay, I'm a little off here. So that, that part is a little, I'm just gonna maybe not make it as dark, maybe fudge a little bit with my pencil there. I'm gonna leave it that a little bit lighter because I know I'm off, you see, I'm a little high. Um, but the rest, let's see, this one is pretty nice. Like that. Uh, the next one is also a little high. So I'm just going to have to, just going to have to adjust that somehow later. It's, it's in part because, did I do that? No, actually I didn't do that freehand, but I think I did this freehand and that's the result. So again, freehand, but just at least one straight edge all the time, okay? You can see it's, it's coming back to bite me now. Um, Yeah, most lines are a little too high. So there, this is nice, this fits right there. Now I've done them all, I think. Yeah, except again, this one right here. Um, let's just darken that. And now I'll take a piece of trace and I'll, uh, Let's just do that to get a little bit of a, a definition here. Oops. Yeah, that's okay, because that's gonna work. All right, so that looks nice. Um, now it's the time to take back your cube, open it up, look inside, okay, what do I see? And literally like put it in front of your eye and see, and put your eye close to what, you know, that position might be. Um, I don't know if I have room to show it. No, I'll, I'll leave it out because there is no room. But what I'll do is I'll proceed from the front to the back and I'll just make the lines that I know are good and then try to figure out the rest, okay? So another piece of trace real quick. And we're almost on our way. So now it's truly freehand because, because I can afford, because tracing paper is cheap and because, um, I will, I will still refer to this, and this is my best, um, yeah, kind of reference, right? Remember, we're looking at it this way, right? A little bit, um, a little bit off of this edge right there, which is the right edge. Um, so why don't I take um, maybe a black? And the first thing, of course, I want to draw is the front because that's the easiest to part, right? The very line in the front. So let's start with that, which is this one. Like that. Is everything, you know, that's closest to me. So that's that, I, I'm pretty sure I can't go wrong if I just trace it and I can see already that the floor is also you know there and it's not going to be messed with by anybody so I'm just going to draw that okay so now let me just proceed towards the back from the left and the right so we see the next line is this one and then on this side the next line is um, this one right here and then the other one and Again, double check, whoops. Um, you can see that this, sorry, this guy right here is hiding, it's gonna hide a lot of stuff that's back there. So that's the principle that as you move towards the back and you see a line, just go to the center so that you take care of that. And then what's behind will be you know, covered up. So I'll do that now, not only with this particular line, which is gonna to go to the center here like that. And therefore everything here will be hidden. I'm gonna do that now with the left side. 
which I had actually several lines, which is this one and this one and also this one. And you see, everything else is hidden there. Now here, let's now do the part that's on top that we can actually kind of see, uh, which is this part. See, because it's shifted to the left, my point of view, um, I can see the center above it actually, right? So I can see the roof. Um, well, I can see it because it's sloping because I'm not that high, right? I'm only this high. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, because I'm, no, I'm not that high, I'm, I'm only this high, but I see it because it's, it's like a roof coming down towards you, okay? So, and I can, you know, because now I've done it several times, that's the center, I see that it continues, but I'm not gonna touch that yet. What I'm gonna do instead is do these two triangles going to the center, which is from here. And from there. And then if I were going back here, you can see it progresses. This, there's a triangle back here that sticks out. So it's this one. And then that also goes over there. And then it comes back on the back down at the bottom, comes here again. Uh, actually, no, no, that's not visible because that's the back. From here, I go to the center again. And then these two parts are here. So that's my final and it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, that's it. And, and again, to see how this is, you know, shows what perspective does, of course, similar things look different, look smaller. So if I were to like, you could, this is a fun thing to do, which is um, draw these butterflies of the um, possible pairs of triangles. So that's the same triangle in the back, much smaller because it's in perspective. This is in the front, okay? And so forth and so on. You could do the same for all pairs of triangles like that. And maybe another one, and then we'll stop this game because it's too much fun. Now that one, of course, goes uh, here. Like that. Oh yeah, this one met. This one touches the other triangle I just drew. Okay. Um, so remember to put a an horizon line, which is this line right here. And remember to draw little people. Well, not little, but you know, these are again five, six feet tall, uh, but make all their heads hang from the horizon line, okay? That way we know they're about the same height. Because if you put one guy here this tall, well, that um, is obviously too tall, right? If you were side by side there. Um, Okay, and if you want to do a little kid, just take the base of an adult and stick the little kid, you know, on that base and make him shorter. Okay. Or, you know, you can be fancy and you can put a little shadow, let's see, it would be here. So here, if it was on that wall. Um, so, and then just darken your thing there, okay? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do it now because I wanna make the video as short as possible, but, but now that I have this, um, now I would take another piece of trace, right? And I would, and I would now copy this. Well, in fact, I tell you what, why don't I just do it? Because that's that's not that's not proper to say, oh well, if I have it. No, I have it. Let me just finish it. It will be it will be really quick. So I'm gonna put it there. Let me shift the camera a little bit. Um, and we're gonna finish it up. Okay, so yet another piece of trace. Now this piece of trace you would you would position so that it's a nice clean. I mean, a nice center. Um, so
So you could put it like that. So, you know, horizontal, or you could put it vertical, up to you, okay? For me right now, because it's convenient, I'm gonna put it vertical so I can actually see it. I can actually work, okay? Um, here's my scotch. I told you the story of my son looking for his scotch when he was in kindergarten. I mean, actually pre-K, because in Italian we say scotch for scotch tape. I'm just learning Italian. Um, okay. I'll use again a thick, a thick black or a thick uh, blue pencil, but you want to use a, just a regular pencil. So straight edge. And now all I do is copy. Again, I don't think. I just copy this, right? Because I have all the information and this tells me where to go and not to go. Okay, so I start, um, I start with the parts that are in front because that's easier. See, I wanna make it so I can lift the paper once in a while so we can see if we make a mistake. Um, you know, we can quickly, we can quickly lift the paper. Um, all right. So I start from the front and I just quickly draw that. And this now should be pretty fast. Um, notice though that even when I do a short line like that, I have to be careful, you know, because I could make it skewed. So instead use your reference points, which would be like this other point here, right? So line it up because you always need that. And now of course, don't tell anyone, but you know, you can fudge a little bit if things are not like, you know, if that center didn't work out earlier, you can adjust it a little bit more. And that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna make sure that when I go to that center, everything is like uh, nice looking. Okay, you see, I'm getting confused. I'm looking at this like, ah, what am I gonna do? Okay, well, go back here. That's what you need to do, right? So let's just do that because, ooh, that line is thick. Um, a little too thick because I didn't I didn't turn the pencil. If you turn it, they'll they'll come out more even. Now I just have to be careful not to get too excited. Well, but really, it's a it's a matter of just copying, copying, copying. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm making a few adjustments now that you know I'm I'm not tracing exactly the lines as they're drawn, but I'm just making sure they go to the center. So every time. Um, And always, in this case, go to the, yeah, go to the vanishing point. You can see this line is a little bit also off. Um, all right. And hopefully this video will turn out okay so that we can, we can use it. Uh, Uh, once again, a trick is to not go all the way from beginning to end, but start at the beginning and then go to the end and start from the end and go towards the middle of the line because you get nice endings that way. Uh, so here, even though I'm not really matching the original spot, this looks better. But especially with like little guys like that. It's a lot easier if you do this. So if... Okay, so now I do the, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a few people, um, <clears throat> a few people beforehand. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna make them purple. Uh, let's see, the horizon line was there. No, purple is not good, it's still in black. <laughs> 
Uh, that way, when I do the lines, they already be blocking the line in the back. Um, so, little kid right there, a little shadow. Oh, too bad I put this guy too close to the edge. So that shadow is not going to be as nice as this one. We can just do it like that. That looks funny, doesn't it? I don't like that. It just confuses. This was much better. Okay. So now let's finish the, the, so because the floor is so tight, you can try to spend a little, pay a little more attention to that so that you get your lines nice and clean. Um, and and still be you know in perspective and all of that. Sometimes I, I get scared because it's like wait there's like four five tiles instead of four, <laughs> but I think it's right. Um, Okay, so almost there with the floor. Paint. Like that, and then I go back to my blue for my, yeah, this is coming out a little bit off here. Oops. Yeah, again, if you decide to do the other cube on the on the left side too, just, just knock this wall out so that you can see through, okay? Um, I think I did it. I think that's correct. Um, just finish these guys up a little bit. Let's do a little shadow like that. And maybe just add the horizon line um, just to show that these people are all at the same height. And that will conclude this video after we put a little bit of. There we go. Okay, great. Um, well, I'm happy this worked out. Again, we drew this cube, which was, you know, this particular design. And um, that is the two point perspective with a low, okay, low horizon line of your cube to make it look like it's an environment. Um, okay, thanks for your attention. I hope I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.